we're going to talk about how you can effectively organize your argument to make sure that you're set up for success whenever you actually begin writing your essay. So, as you know, there's about 120 minutes or two hours that you get in order to take the whole high set writing exam. And you want to spend about 45 minutes on your actual essay. Well, to break that down even further, you want to spend about 10 minutes actually planning what you're going to write before you start writing. Think about it like this. Let's say that you are uh, visiting a foreign country. Uh, you and a friend are traveling around in, let's say, Russia. I've never been to Russia. So let's say that you are driving around in, in Russia and suddenly your friend becomes very sick. Uh, so what do you do? Well, you throw your friend in the car and you jump in the driver's seat and you just start driving. And you're driving and you're looking for a hospital. And you're driving around. And an hour later, you're probably still just driving around looking for a hospital and your friend is still sick and uh, he's probably a little angry at you at this point. So what should you have done? Well, before you got in the car, you probably should have opened up a map and planned out a route, the quickest point from here to the hospital. Well, your, your high set exam, your essay, is going to be the exact same way. If you don't plan what you're going to say, then you're probably just going to start writing and writing and writing, and you're never really going to get where you're going. You're never get, really going to say the things that you really wanted to say in the first place. So the 10 minutes that you have planning your argument is arguably the, the most important part of your high set essay exam. So let's look at what you actually need to plan in these first 10 minutes. Well. If you remember from the first video, these are the directions that you're probably going to see on the high set essay. Uh, these are the things that you actually need to plan. You need to figure out what your own position is on the issue, whatever the issue is that they bring up on the exam. You need to find some evidence from the text passages and plan exactly which evidence that you want to use that supports your argument. You need to Look at some examples from your own experience. And finally, you need to acknowledge alternate or opposing ideas, or basically you need to figure out what other people would say that is against your argument. So those are the things that you need to plan. In order to actually plan those things, you have a couple of tools that you can use, namely a piece of paper and a pencil. So if you have a piece of paper and a pencil with you, or uh, you can go grab one, pause the video and get that thing out, and then follow along with me. Go ahead, I'll wait. OK, so we have our piece of paper and a pencil. And here's what I want you to do. First, turn that over on its side in landscape mode or horizontally, and draw a line right down the middle till a little over halfway down the page. It's a vertical line all the way down. And then draw a line right across the top, horizontally right across the top. On the left side, write for. And on the right side, write against. Those are going to be where you're going to put the evidence for the passages that you're going to read that are in support or against the argument uh, for whatever the high set exam decides that you need to write that day. Draw one more line. And here we're going to write whatever personal experience that we might have with the subject. One more line, and then we need to write our own view. And this is where you're actually going to write what the view is that you have on the subject, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. Uh, and this will make, make it absolutely clear what your beliefs are about the subject. So now that we have our roadmap, we need to fill in this information here. Now, just like we were talking about in the first video, before you actually write your essay, you're going to read through a text passage that supports a subject. You're going to read through another text passage that is against a subject or does not support it. Uh, let's look at an example taken from our friends over at New Readers Press. And I want to give a shout out to New Readers Press. Thank you all for letting us use this for our videos. Um, let's look at an example about whether or not people should be able to use music to study in the school library or whether it's too distracting. So we'll read through the article that is against listening to music while studying in the library. Studying with music stops learning. As a member of the Faculty Senate, I am very concerned about our students and want them to receive the best education possible while here at our state university. Listening to music while studying is a bad habit that interferes with students' ability to learn. To solve this problem, the Faculty Senate recommends that studying while listening to music should be banned in the university library. Walk with me through our library on a recent Monday night. There, you will see hundreds of students supposedly studying. 
A closer look shows that students are far more engaged with the music flowing through their earbuds than with their books. They move their bodies in time to the music, caught up in a world far away from the thoughts of learning. The sound of music is everywhere. Students trying to hear their own music through all the noise crank up their volume, making it even louder. With all this music, the once quiet library has become a loud and distracting place. Speaking of distraction, listening to music while studying contributes to the multitasking that is so harmful to students' learning. Students think they can listen to music, do homework, text, and use social media all at the same time. Research from Stanford University in 2009 and other studies since then all confirm people are terrible at multitasking. Since it is hard for the brain to determine what information is important and what is not, multitasking makes each activity take twice as long and causes 50% more mistakes. Additionally, the music itself is a problem. University of Toronto psychologist Glenn Schellenberg found in a 2011 study that listening to fast and loud music interfered with reading comprehension. Ask most students about their favorite songs, and most prefer the very kind of music that makes it hard to study. As reading is a major part of studying, listening to fast and loud music stops learning in its tracks. So Dr. Ehrenberg makes some pretty good points here, and he actually cites a 2011 study that supports his own argument. That's really strong evidence that really supports what he's trying to say. So what we want to do is take his main points out and write them down over on our list. And those are going to be the main bullet points that we use that are against the argument that, that we're writing about. Now let's go and read argument four, being able to listen to music while you study in the library. Music helps me learn. The Faculty Senate at our state university is considering a ban on students listening to music while studying in the library, claiming that studying while listening to music interferes with learning. Instead, listening to music while studying helps students learn and must be allowed to continue at the library. Studying stresses me out. Thoughts race through my brain all about the week I have to do and all about the exams I have to take, making it impossible for me to focus. Music is the only thing that calms me down. Once I plug into my music, my stress melts, my emotions calm, and my brain gets ready for some serious learning. Many students I know are easily distracted while studying or find that studying makes them fall asleep. For distracted students, music keeps them on task. They are less likely to look up and notice everyone who walks by their table. For some students, working a part-time job while juggling a full-time college schedule leaves them so tired they fall asleep after a few minutes of studying. Music keeps them awake so they can focus and learn. Finally, a ban on music in the library will not solve the problem the Faculty Senate is trying to fix. Students who need their music will just study in other areas. Instead of our quiet library, students will be forced to study in noisy dorm rooms or loud restaurants. The 2011 study Dr. Ehrenberg mentioned found that listening to music while studying was much better for learning than hearing loud background noise. For the sake of all the students across campus who need music to study, please do not ban music in our library. So Shelley actually makes some really good points here as well, and she actually uses the same exact study that Dr. Ehrenberg used in the first uh, example to strengthen her own argument. So let's take those two things out and write them down over on our paper. So now we have a couple of points that are for being able to listen to music while you study in the library, and against that as well. Now what we need to figure out is whether or not we have some sort of personal experience with the matter. And as a matter of fact, uh, the library that's in my neighborhood actually has quiet reading rooms where you can go in and study without getting distracted. So I'm going to write that down here, and then we'll figure out how to work it into the uh, essay a little bit later. The last thing that we want to write is one sentence that briefly sums up our own view on the subject. And my personal view is that, well, as long as music is kept at a very low volume, then the library at our state university should continue to allow st students to listen to music to help them study. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that, I, as long as it's not distracting anybody. So that one view actually sums up my thoughts, and this is actually what is called a thesis statement. So 
This one sentence right here will work into probably the introduction paragraph of our essay. That way the reader knows exactly what our view is on the subject. So now that we have everything written down right here, we have a really good roadmap uh, to write our essay. And we can refer back to this as we're writing to make sure that we say and hit all of the points that we need to hit whenever we're actually writing the essay.